Being a rock and roll star can be a dangerous profession, as it seems rock stars have been dropping dead left and right at early ages since the inception of rock. These deaths are generally tragic and often involve a good deal of drug use and debauchery. Join Facts First as we take a look at the youngest rock and roll deaths of the 1960s. Martin Lamble, 19 Martin Lamble is a figure who has gone down in history as the youngest popular musician to pass away during the 60s. His tragic death came near the end of the decade when his band was driving down the freeway in the spring of 1969. Martin Lamble was the drummer of the folk group Fairport Convention, which came from England. It was in England that the tragic accident occurred. Besides Martin, the girlfriend of Fairport Convention's guitarist also perished. According to the surviving members of the band, their bus was going 70 miles an hour down the freeway when their driver suddenly fell asleep. Guitarist Richard Thompson was the only one awake, and he grabbed the wheel as soon as he saw the van was veering off the road. While this save managed to keep the van from colliding into a pole in the freeway's median, Richard overcorrected. His sudden maneuvering of the wheel sent the van hurtling off the road. Richard claimed he lost consciousness, and then when he woke up, saw his girlfriend was also unconscious. By the time emergency vehicles came, both she and Martin had passed away. Martin Lamble may have been the youngest popular musician to pass away in the 60s, but he likely wouldn't even be remotely notable if it weren't for his tragic death at an early age. On the other hand, Eddie Cochran is a figure who found immense fame as a solo artist before his tragic death at the young age of 21. Eddie's death occurred on Easter, with the young legend passing away April 17, 1960. At the time of his death, he was in the UK, though he came from America. As a result of both Eddie's immense charm and untimely tragic death, the rock and roll legend has often been described as the James Dean of rock and roll. Like James Dean, Eddie had rogue good looks and an edge to match. However, Eddie's form of expression was his music. Another thing they have in common is that the minor amount of work both left behind is regarded as having cultural significance vastly outweighing its quantity. While Eddie Cochran had rock star good looks, he also had immense musical talent. He was a multi-instrumentalist, proficient not only in his chosen instrument of guitar, but also in bass guitar and drums. Not only did he have technical talent, but he also had a knack for penning tunes. He wrote all his own hits, with the star's most remembered songs including Summertime Blues. Eddie had arrived in the UK in early 1960 to go on tour with fellow musician Gene Vincent. The tour ended tragically when Eddie perished in a car accident several months later. Eddie's early death made him immortal, and the rock and roll legend lives on through his limited works. Bobby Fuller, 23 One of the most impressive figures on this list is Bobby Fuller. Despite dying by his own apparent hand at the age of 23, he accomplished a great deal in his short lifetime. He accomplished a good deal of his dreams with relatively little help from outside sources, but he wouldn't have been able to get his start without the help of his parents, as it was the rock star's parents who purchased him the instruments and recording equipment he used to become a Texas legend. Making music with his friends using this equipment, Bobby Fuller slowly began taking his hometown of El Paso, Texas by storm. He quickly became a local celebrity. By 1964, Bobby had enough money to purchase his own club. Bobby and his band, dubbed the Bobby Fuller Four, acted as the house band for the club, which catered towards teens. As a result, his popularity increased tenfold. By the end of 64, the Bobby Fuller Four was given a chance to head to California to make a bid for national success. It was at this point that the record label began to take over, and the Bobby Fuller Four began to fall apart. Despite some initial commercial success, disagreements amongst Bobby and his band members caused a good deal of tension. In addition, many of the band's fans were turned off by their new commercial direction. It was in the wake of all this that Bobby Fuller's apparent suicide took place in July of 1966. He was found dead in his mother's car with a plastic hose in his hands leading to a can of gasoline. This sight caused authorities to label the death a suicide, though it was later found that Bobby had been dead for longer than he'd been in the car. Because of this, many have theorized that there was some kind of foul play, and whoever killed him set his body up to look like he'd committed suicide. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like, and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already, and consider clicking the Join button below to become a Facts First member. Doing so will give you access to exclusive videos featuring content too risque for YouTube. Frankie Lyman During his short lifetime, Frankie Lyman rose to prominence as one of the leads of the rock and roll group The Teenagers. The band achieved mainstream success with the release of their 1956 single, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? Frankie was only a teen at the time. 
Following the teenager's breakout success, his handlers had the young star make a bid for a solo career starting in 1957. Sadly, Frankie wasn't able to find much solo success, and he entered into the 60s with few prospects. Little was heard from Frankie Lyman over the course of the 60s until he died towards the end of the decade of a heroin overdose. Though he was over a decade removed from stardom, he was only 25 years old. He was found passed away on the floor of his grandmother's bathroom. Otis Redding, 26 Otis Redding was at the top of the world when he died tragically in 1967. Legend has it the singer had just finished recording the song that was the biggest hit of his career, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. The singer had laid down his vocals for the song, though some parts he simply whistled because he hadn't yet written words to match the melody. Sadly, Otis passed away before coming up with those words. The song ended up being released with Otis's original whistling intact, with the song's whistling outro now being one of the most iconic parts of the soul legend's entire oeuvre. The singer's death occurred while he was flying on his plane to perform a concert in Madison, Wisconsin. Brian Jones, 27 Brian Jones is best remembered for being one of the founding members of the Rolling Stones, and he helped develop the blues-tinted sound the band still carries on. Brian was the lead guitarist of the band, though he passed away before they created most of their iconic output during the 70s. Prior to his passing, he was considered to be the creative figurehead of the band. It was Brian who chose the band's musical direction, and his shadow still loomed over Keith Richards and Mick Jagger's creative songwriting partnership after his tragic death in 1969 at age 27. Dickie Pride, 27 Dickie Pride was born in 1941, and he showed immense promise as a singer from an early age. Young Dickie's voice was allegedly so angelic that his choir teachers believed he could be an opera singer when he grew up. Instead, he became a rock and roll star, and subsequently an early member of the venerable 27 Club. Like Frankie Lyman, Dickie Pride was a figure who saw immense fame come and go over the course of his life, despite the fact that he died at a young age. Dickie was only 16 when he made his entrance into show business, signing with Columbia Records in the late 50s. Sadly, he didn't find prolonged success with the label. By 1961, the young man's star had largely faded. A few years into the decade, he started a family and was forced to take up a normal job. Despite his attempts to live a normal life, he still dreamed of stardom. His crushed dreams caused the fallen star to escape into drugs, with the former rock star developing a heroin addiction. This led to voluntary internment at a mental hospital, where doctors allegedly performed a lobotomy. A few years later, he passed away from a sleeping pill overdose. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these stories is the most tragic in your eyes? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.